So today I want to walk you through a little bit of what the first grade curriculum is like at Liberty University Online Academy. Hey there everybody, I'm Tracy from teachmetracy.com and on this channel you're going to see videos all about the tips, tools, and tricks to thrive in a homeschool lifestyle. That let's do a little bit of a breakdown of the first grade curriculum. I, I want to start with first grade because this is the curriculum that we are currently finishing this week. As a disclaimer, I do not receive a commission at all for doing any of these videos for Liberty University. I do it because I want to help parents find a solution for homeschool, and I believe that this is the best available option for parents who don't want to create a curriculum themselves and who would like some additional support on the back end. So I'm not a shill for Liberty. I don't work for Liberty. This is something that we use in our homeschool program. So all of that being said, let's talk a little bit about what the first grade curriculum consists of and what you can expect. I'm going to, as we go through some of these, I'm going to let you take a look at some of Eric J's work that he's completed this year. I'm not going to be able to show you an actual lesson because that is proprietary information, but I can show you the result of the lesson. So there are two 18-week semesters and they consist of 180 days of school. That is 180 days of instruction is required by law. The lessons are comprised of several different activities and they do a, a really good job of making sure that, let's say you have a math assignment that's due on Monday. That's usually the only assignment that you will have to do on a Monday. So they try not to pile too many assignments on the child that are to be graded in one day. So it alleviates a lot of that pressure. I suppose when they get older and start writing papers and that kind of thing, there will be homework at some point, but there is no homework. So each lesson is 45 minutes to one hour. So within the literacy program, we kept a journal and we filled up one and a half notebooks or composition books. Uh, so there's quite a bit of writing. And I, I love this about Liberty because they're teaching students from a very young age how to write creatively. It is fantastic. And they do a lot with the journals. They keep their spelling words in there. Sometimes they um, make, make up sentences and underline their sight words. They do story webs in there. They do main idea, parts of speech. They'll have to go through and um, make sentences with nouns or make sentences with adjectives. There's descriptive writing. There's all kinds of things that they do in this journal. Along with the journals, there's worksheets. There are also presentations that, that the students need to give sometimes for grades. And they start the students out very, very young, presenting themselves and talking to other people. So it becomes an exercise and they get used to it and they look forward to it. I'm going to tell the story of how the duckling gets a cookie. First, duckling asks for a cookie. The cookie has nuts. The then Pigeon sees the cookie and asks how Duckling got a cookie. After du Duckling tells how he got a cookie, Pigeon becomes upset because Duckling has a cookie. Next, Pigeon has a fit because he was wants a cookie. Finally, duck the Duckling gives Pigeon his, his cookie. But it is a very traditional literacy program. There's phonics, spelling, grammar, fiction, and nonfiction texts. And there's also a focus on comprehension of what they're reading and fluency of what they're reading. Towards the end of the week, there will be usually a review and then some kind of an assessment. Now, if it's the end of the semester, there will be a test, which is graded a little more heavily, obviously, than quizzes. But usually every Friday, there's a quiz. So you and your student know where you stand as far as the grades are concerned. In the history part of the year, so history and science, they split for the first grade. You do history the first half of the year and you do science the second half of the year. So in the history section, they learn basic math skills. They learn 
historical characters and what their contribution was to society and how Americans are united within their communities, even though we all come from diverse backgrounds and how we work together to create communities. One of the best units that we did was consumers, producers, goods and services, supply and demand, and making good economic choices. Today I will show you what is good for you and what is not good for you. Do you need a banana to live? Yes. Does a banana give you shelter? No. Can you get juice from a banana? Yes. Do you need a ball to live? No. Oh, you're answering the question. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you need a ball to live? No. Does a ball give you shelter? No. Can you get water from a ball? No. So which one is a need, Eric? For a banana. Banana, yes. And again, you're doing these through worksheets. There are some games that the students play. There's also presentations and there are tests and quizzes. All right, so science is the second half. And if you have a tactile learner or a kinesthetic learner, if you need to look that up, I also have a video on the different types of learners. So if your kid is someone who likes to get their hands on everything, this is probably a really good half of the year for them because there are a ton of science experiments that they, they actually get to participate in. And there's a writing component that goes along with it because they actually do the experiment and then they map out the scientific method that goes along with the experiment. And so they submit those every week for a grade. Usually there's quizzes and there's a test and there's worksheets, but within the science program, you're also doing all of these experiments. We did some of the coolest experiments this year. We made a landfill kinds of things that we did this year. It's pretty intense with a science experiment a week for at least the first 10 weeks of the science class. Towards the last month or so of the science class comes the safety portion. Today I will tell you about my traffic light poster. My traffic light poster means that red light means stop, yellow means go slow, and green means go, and it's for cars too. So when it says red, the cars have to stop. And the yellow means that the cars have to go slow. And green means that the cars can go, go, go fast. So it's a pretty comprehensive science program that they're getting inside that half a year. The fourth subject is Bible. And for first graders, Liberty, it seems like they want to make sure that Bible concentrates on historical figures that relate to the Bible, and they provide scripture that goes along with the stories of these historical figures. And then usually on Thursdays, there's a devotion that explains how these scriptures and how these historical people can relate to the student's own life. And then on Friday, there's usually a quiz. But within the Bible curriculum, there's also going to be worksheets. There's going to be projects that they're going to have to do. Joseph giving out grain in Pharaoh's house. And sometimes there's art projects too. Some of it is pretty impressive. He's become quite the little artist. He really enjoys making some of these projects. And then the fifth and final class that you will receive when you pay your tuition for first grade is math. And math generally focuses on number relationships to each other. For instance, how do you break down five? You can do two and then three is five. And they break it down like that so that it's very, very easy to determine fractions. It's easier to add. Liberty works off of a base 10 math system. They also start introducing kids to how many tens, how many ones. There's also addition, subtraction, multiplication, all of this, the, the standard curriculum that you would expect from math. But it's very well laid out and it's very thought out. There are also worksheets, projects, presentations, quizzes, and tests that go along with the math program as well. Today, I am going to tell you my Venn diagram. Okay, triangle. This circle has all the triangles. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, there's a pink shapes, a pink square and a pink triangle. They are hard 
they are smooth and they are pink and they are shapes. All these are similar extra buttes. Okay, square. All these squares are on, on this circle. And like I said, at any time, if you need assistance with the curriculum, there is help available from multiple sources. So you can call the phone teacher. You can live chat with someone. The phone teacher and the live chat are available Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. You can email your teacher, but just be aware, sometimes it takes your teacher about 24 hours to respond. I think the quickest response that I've gotten from a teacher has been maybe an hour or two. So if you're in the middle of a lesson and you need help right away, I would suggest that you call the phone teacher or the chat live teacher and make sure that you reference the lesson number and what it is because that is someone who's on call and so they're not going to be necessarily your teacher that you're calling. Your guidance counselor is also available for help if you if you need something like a 504 plan or you feel like your student is struggling a little bit, or you feel like that the curriculum is a little bit too easy for your student, you would reach out to your advisor. And you'll know who that is once you confirm your payment and are accepted and that kind of thing. I'll give you the phone numbers of everyone that you can call for any kind of help that you would possibly think of that you would need at Liberty University. So make sure before you sign off, that you grab your freebie down below. The last thing that I want to leave you with is Liberty's admissions number, and that is 866-418-8741. You can also chat live with someone. I'm so happy that you stopped by today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.